Hi friends and welcome back to Joy with Jen. Of course, I'm Jen. I'm so grateful and blessed to be here today. I have a really beginner-friendly, fun project. I want to do a beautiful multi-strand with a gorgeous uh, fall color palette using these jasper beads. So welcome everybody. If you are interested in making a multi-strand, uh, really super beginner-friendly, um, very easy, no muss, no fuss, stay tuned. That's exactly what we're going to get into today. So welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining and sharing a few minutes with me in your day today. You can be doing anything and thank you so much for popping over to watch my video. Um, and if you're not yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Always give me a like, thumbs up and comment. It's free. I appreciate it. It keeps our algorithm happy and allows me to continue to do what I love. So with housekeeping out of the way, guys, let's just jump into it. I'll try to make this as simple and concise and clear as possible <laughs> with my explanations. Um, and what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to jump into making a three-strand, multi-strand necklace today using a very beginner-friendly technique that includes using a bead cone and accent beads, as you can see here. So, as you can see, I have put the majority of it together, but don't to worry, don't worry. <laughs> Stay tuned, because as you're going to be able to see, this was just beading and simple beading. You didn't need to watch me do all of that. We are going to get into the full construction, and we'll finish this side up exactly the same and construct the entire thing together, minus the beading, and you will know how to make this by the time this video is done. I'm almost positive. <laughs> I'll try my best, my friends. So first off, guys, um, I'm using some beads that I picked up from BB Craft. These are these gorgeous, 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 gorgeous Jasper. I, as I told you, I'm having a love affair with Jasper at the moment. Um, I just love, love, love them. They are just absolutely sensational. Um, and I'm also going through a matte phase. So let me pop you down to the mat and show you what we're using here um, from BB Craft. We are using these gorgeous Jaspers. So as you can see, I have the four millimeters and they are in a mat and they are in Picasso stone. Will you just look at that? Absolutely beautiful, my friends. Then we've got these over here on this strand. These are the Jasper uh, column faceted in African turquoise, and look at that. Is that just beautiful for the fall? I cannot. It's so gorgeous, and you want to talk about also a little bit of a Southwest vibe. Boy, is that what I feel that this is talking to me. We're also using from BB Craft this a wonderful paperclip chain I love. I got to tell you guys, I'm going to order more. This is absolutely sensational. I have been looking and looking for paperclip chain, and I am so glad I love it. It's lead, nickel, and cadmium free. You know, if you've been around for a while, you know me about my toxic metals. It's a big no-no for me, um, especially on our chain. And this is that antique gold. It's just fantastic. I really love it. So I'll put some links in the video for you guys with a nice coupon code for 10% off. If you use that coupon code and you see anything over there or here that you like, I will link these um, in the box. Uh, below the video. What else we're going to use, guys? It's minimal, hence beginner friendly. Besides the technique itself, it's so easy. Um, we're using minimal supply, so we're going to just use slipping over the head, so no clasp needed. I'll give you measurements in a second. We're just going to use two wire guardians. We're going to use four two by 1.2 millimeter crimp beads, so any number two crimp beads. Crimp tubes are not going to give you the same outcome as I'm going to show you, but they will work. Okay. They will work. A number two crimp tube will absolutely work. So we're going to use a number two crimp bead though. Okay. I've got them in copper. I've got my, so you need four. I'm going to be using my wire guardians to match up my chain and my bead cone in antique gold. So you'll need two of those. We're going to use two copper six millimeter, um, 21 gauge, uh, jump rings. And then we're using two bead cones, also an antique gold. And then we are going to be using two on each side. So another four of the four millimeter uh, Picasso Jasper beads 
as our accent beads here. And let me pull you down to the mat and show you what we've already done. This is how one side looks all done up here, okay? And the other thing that we are going to use is a bunch of toe hose, little 11 toehose. toe hose. Um, I will explain to you that in a second. We need some bead stoppers, multiple if you have them. If you've got just one, that'll work fine too. The reason I have three, by the way, is because we're gonna braid this one, but if you're not gonna braid it, you can skip that step and just use one bead stopper. But having a bead stopper is great for a multi-string because it takes a lot of time, obviously, to string our beads up. And that is it, guys, and then my bead cones. So let me tell you my measurements and what I've done here. So I'll explain it strand by strand so you understand and I don't confuse you. <laughs> okay, friends. So basically I have, the first thing I did was cut a 10 inch piece of chain. Now modify, I'm just going to try to show you the technique today. Modify your measurements according to what you desire. For example, if you would like to put a clasp on this chain, that's wonderful. Then simply cut your chain in the middle. You know, you can measure 10 inches, you can measure 14 inches of chain, you can measure eight inch of chain and cut it in the center and add your clasp. But I wanna minimize my hardware and I want this beauty for the fall to just slip right over my head. So for me, my measurement that goes right to each side of my neck, okay, the front of my neck, so going around the back of my neck to the front side of either side of my neck, my measurement is 10 inches of chain, okay? And that's because it's just gonna be at the back of the neck, you're not gonna really see it. And the rest you're gonna see is this and all the beads, okay? Now, with that said, I also have a cascading effect, meaning all three of my strands are a different length, okay? And I'm going to braid them to boot, okay? But we're gonna do a very loose braid. So my measurements for the inner strand, middle, and outer. So it's 18, 20, and 22 inches from bead to bead, okay? From bead to to bead, and I'll explain that one second further, 18, 20, and 22. I like to put two inches between each of my strands when I'm doing a cascading, and obviously a cascading means that all of your strands, right, they're landing different down here, right? You can also modify that and just do like three 18-inch strands or three 20-inch strands or three 24-inch strands, whatever you want, guys. You can totally modify your measurements according to how you would like this to look. It's just really a design aesthetic, okay? But those are the measurements I've used to get the effect that I'm showing you. So I have a 10 inch piece of chain, and then I have my inner strand starts at 18 inches from bead to bead, 20 and 22 inches on the outside. With that said, let's go over to the seed beads. What I mean by bead to bead is that I have started out my inner strand, I put 10 11 O's, and then eat the next strand, I minus a seed bead and then minus the seed bead again. So in other words, you want to put the majority of your seed beads because they're just going to end up getting tucked all up in the, the majority of them is going to get tucked up in our cone here. And so what I'll do is I put like 10 on the inner strand and then nine and then eight. And these are 11 o Toho's in copper. So we have the mixed metal vibe going on. So we've staying in trend with our layers for 2024 and our mixed metals, the copper and antique gold just gel beautifully together. So that's what I basically did, right? Okay, so just to summarize for my beginners, we did a 10 inch piece of chain and I strung up three strands, 18, 20, and 22 inches. On the inner strand, I put 10 seed beads, middle strand nine, and the outer strand eight on each end, okay? Now, that you do modify, the reason I said that two or three times there is because that just depends on the bead cone, guys. So I'm using a bead cone, that I think these are nine millimeter, but the diameter is the most important. So how many beads, how many strands can you get in that bead cone? Well, these are long and thin, but I like the way that it, you know, it just goes so beautifully 
the whole color palette here. So, and it matches the chain perfectly. So that's why I'm using those. And basically, as you can see, I'm pretty full there with my little 11 O's. And now I could have used 15 O's to go even smaller, but I don't want it to be too crowded because you still want to have some movement. So I was able to get just the three strands in here and the majority of those seed beads fit and snug right up in that bead cone. And then we have just a few peeking out in a different cascading way on the outside strands, which is exactly what I was looking for. So you can modify the amount of seed beads that you need depending upon the cone. So if you have a shorter cone, you would need less seed beads. If you have a longer cone, you would use a few more seed beads. That's all that is, okay? And so with that, the reason I have three separate bead stoppers on my strands is because now what we're going to do is go ahead and braid it. Okay. So I want to pull you down now and show you what we've done. And not to worry, we're going to do this whole thing over on the other side together. But this is what this looks like. And you obviously can see it's very loose, right? Um, because we haven't tightened it up yet. But this is ultimately what this is going to look like. So we have a wire guardian, we have a crimp, we have two accent beads, then I have a bead cone, and inside that bead cone, I have a cr another crimp, and then we have all the seed beads, and then we start with our strands. So we do a crimp on the inside and the outside of the bead cone. Tried and true technique I'm giving you there. I've been doing that for years and my multi-strands do not fall apart. <laughs> so a little pro tip for you there. So let's get to it, shall we guys? So basically what we're gonna do right now is put, we just need some crimps in a second here. Um, we'll need one crimp and the bead cone when we get started here over here once we finish braiding. So let me adjust you a little bit here so that I can have you as much in camera as humanly possible so that you can see what I'm doing for braiding. So again, I've got my strands all on their own bead stopper. So the first thing I'm gonna do, guys, is I am going to lay my strands kind of out separate from each other and I am going to push them you see how much gap I have here? I wanna make sure that up here is tight as I'm braiding. So I am going to push all of these beads down, okay? But then I'm gonna put a little bit of kind of like a snake situation in them. And then I'm gonna move my bead stopper down pretty much right at the edge of my beads on my strand. Now, the reason I'm doing that, friends, is my rule. I've said it many times on my channel. When we are crimping, we don't crimp like this when we want fluidity and movement. We crimp either by coiling like a snake or doing some sort of drape, just the exact way things would lay on the body, okay? And so that is why I did that. So first, I wanna push everything up so that I know it's nice and tight up in that bead cone. But then what I want to do is I kind of want to just, I can either go like this or I can just kind of snake it up a little bit or just put a little bit of a swirl in it, whatever, just so that I know that when I crimp this, that it's going to not be too stiff like this. Okay, so I'm doing that with all three strands. So we've just done that one. And now I'll grab my second strand here and you can see I've got quite a bit of slack here. Okay, and same thing, I'm going to push all these beads up, make sure everything is all pulled up first. Okay, and then I am gonna meet, move my bead stopper down pretty close to the edge of that last bead. There's a little slack there, but I am going to put it like this to make sure that everything has some movement. And when I do that, I am pretty close, but there's a little slack still. So I'll go ahead and push that up 
and that's perfect. And we'll do the same thing on my last strand. Pull all my beads up here. And move my bead stopper to where it's pretty much hugging that last bead. And then let me go over here and I can see that, see it's a little bit um, bunchy when I turn and twist it around here, although there are no gaps because you still don't want any gaps, but you need movement. So I think I will move that up just a hair away from that bead. And let's see where we're at now. Perfect. Okay, so now my bead strands are the way they need to be. And so essentially, guys, all I'm going to do is I am going to start braiding. And so let me put them in order that they are, right? So this is obviously my shortest strand. And then we've got that one. And then my longest strand is coming off camera over here. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to do a basic braid. And so I'm just going to be going putting this strand here, just like you braid your hair. And then this strand goes like that. Okay, and I wanna do, you can do a tight or a loose braid. I'm gonna do a really loose braid, just for a little, little something extra. Give it a little dimension. So now this strand is here and this one's over here. So now I'm gonna take this one and put it here. And now this strand needs to go over here. And you see the effect that I'm getting here. They're kinda, twining in and out of each other. Now he goes there. He goes there. That one goes there. This one goes like that. And that's a nice loose braid. So if I kind of go like this and start to smooth it out, I can kind of start to get an idea of how much this is braided. I don't want it to be too tight. I don't want it to be too loose. It's kind of, it's just, again, kind of a design aesthetic, guys. Just, you know, you do what looks visually happy to you. So I think that I just need to tighten up just a smidge there. I'm gonna go like that, and this one comes over here. And now we'll go that way, and then he goes that way, and he goes that way. And I think that's good. And so that is what I have. I'm happy with that. And this is gonna get all loosened up in a minute as we continue on. So let me move you down a little bit here. Let's continue on. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is now I'm going to pull that up and I'm going to grab a crimp and we're going to grab a cone and we are going to carefully remove our bead stoppers from each of our strands, okay? And you're going to notice what's going to happen because all three are different lengths, right? So they are. it's going to end up being way different in a minute. But the first thing that we need to do is get the bead stoppers off here. And then we're gonna take all three of these strands and we're going to flush cut here because it's easier, that's why. <laughs> and keeping those three strands together, I'm gonna wanna put my crimp through all three of these strands, just like this, okay? And let it drop down Okay, and what we're gonna do now is we need to kind of adjust the way that it looks, see what I mean? How it's going to, I'm still holding it by the way. I'm holding it right here where this crimp is. Okay, I'm not letting go. Everything is nice and tight there and my crimp is right there and that's exactly the way I want it. But I'm gonna lay it the way that it would lay on the body and so now things are gonna start to move around a little bit as they should. And I'm just going to kind of, you know, jiggle it around and move it around until it really looks the way that I want it to look. Let 
me pull you up here a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm, again, keeping a hold here, but I'm wanting to kind of pull everything down and let gravity get involved so everything, I can just see how it's going to lay before I go and crimp this off. And so this is what I have at the moment. This is what it looks like. And to me, it looks like I have one additional wrap or braid on this side than this side. So in order to fix that, I'll remove my crimp. And let me just see, what do I need to do here? So he needs to kind of be going in. Like that, I feel. Or did that just unwind him? Oh, it just unwound you. Okay, great. Well then let me wind you back. Okay, there we go. So now I just have the twist here. That's exactly what I was looking for. And the twist here, can you guys see that? And everything is kind of laying down here. That's exactly what I was looking for. You see that? Yeah, that's gonna be really, really cool. Yep, okay. And so now I'm gonna feed my crimp back on. Okay, so let's get the crimp back on there. And the easy part, guys, here is just simply making sure that your crimp is in all three of your wires. We're gonna pull it all the way down, okay, to where it's meeting the top of our beads. I've got you way down on the mat here. Hopefully you can see, let me pull you down a little bit more so you can see the construction of what I'm doing here. And we'll grab a regular crimp tool and we'll put that in the back divot. That crimp in the back divot, again, holding my wires. Before I crimp this though, I am going to pull each wire individually. See, I just actually cut some slack out. As my necklace is laying like this, I'm pulling all of these up so that everything is nice and snug. And we'll put that in a uh, crimp in the back divot. And we'll give that a squeeze, turn it to the side, put in the top divot of your crimper and make our taco. And now we will feed our bead cone on. And so we'll put all those wires right there through our bead cone. Okay, and so now this is what you have, okay. And now what we're going to do, keeping our wires together, is we are going to feed on our two accent beads down all three of our wires. Okay, so this is what I have now. Okay. And now what we'll do is once again, we are gonna grab our last crimp with all of our wires together. We haven't separated them yet, but we're about to now. And now we have that crimp. So you see what I have? I have my bean cone, my two accent beads, and my crimp on all three of my wires. So we know that all three of our wires are about to get crimped on top as well as we already secured them on the inside of the bead cone. However, we don't really need to put all of these wires through the wire guardian. 
So you can just pick a wire. It doesn't matter which one. We're going to grab our wire guardian. Let the other two wires just go ahead and hang out there. And we're going to feed this one wire up the barrel of the wire guardian. And up and over the horseshoe and down the barrel of the other side of our wire guardian. It's so hard to see sometimes when my camera is zoomed down. Sorry guys, there we go. Okay, and now I'm gonna take the tail of that where the wire guardian is, okay? And I'm gonna feed that through my crimp. And so now we have four wires going through that crimp. And there comes my tail. And I'm gonna hold my wire guardian and I'm gonna hold the wire guardian as I'm pulling my tail and pull that all the way down until it meets my crimp. Just exactly like that. Okay, our other two wires are up here still hanging out. They're fine, we'll get to them in a second and flush cut them out, off of there. But we wanna go ahead and crimp everything. So the last thing I do is I kinda put it on the mat, I lay my necklace, just the way it will be on the body. And I kind of take my wires and pull them in opposite directions just to make sure that everything is nice and snug. So there's one wire I'm pulling up, wire two, pulling this wire down, and we're good. And now we will put our crimper tool in the bottom divot and we'll give that a squeeze, turn it to the side, go to the top divot of the crimp, Squeeze it again, make it a taco, and now we can flush cut all of our wires. And I know I did a lot of talking there, but I was trying to just make sure that my beginners were inf are informed and you guys get the gist of it, but it is really so easy. <laughs> and now all we have to do is literally add our chain and so in order to do that, I will reach over here and let me grab a couple pair of uh, pliers. And each uh, chain nose will do. And so we'll just open up our jump ring. And we're just simply going to feed the jump ring on the wire guardian and the last link of our chain. and close them up. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys enjoyed um, a, a fun little spin, super easy way to put a um, multi-strand together using the bead cone and the accent beads with frankly minimal hardware. Um, and you know, I just love doing them this way. Um, I think they turn out fantastic. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Give me a, let me know in the comments what you guys think. And same thing over here. We'll just add that wire guardian and the last link of our chain. And... Close that up. If I can keep it in my hands. These are really, as you see, I'm struggling a little bit. I just happened to put a little elbow grease um, these are like 20 or 21 gauge head, um, jump rings. So they're nice and secure, which is exactly what I wanted. Um, 
Nothing flimsy happening here. <laughs> I'm going for the good stuff when I'm making a multi-strand. That is for sure. Get everything out of the way here and show you guys what we have. I'll pull you up. And don't forget to click the um, link in the box if you are interested to pick up any of these supplies. And this is what we have. So let me try to put it kind of like on an angle so you can see. So this is the way that it looks and it'll just be very flowy and pretty. I love it. I love the way that that turned out. Well, let's make it even. There we go with my bead caps. So that's how that turned out. That's, a let, that's how that will lay. And I think it looks just absolutely gorgeous. And so if we just kind of pull the chain in a little bit here, you can see the crack way. That's how that will lay. Really super pretty. Love it. I think this is going to be beautiful for fall. I hope you guys enjoy. Don't forget to use your coupon code and um, I will see you guys in the next video. Until next video, my friends, be blessed.